Good morning, Mountain West. Uh, my name is RJ Farrell, and I am, as of last week, one of the new campus pastors here. And my family and I, we are so thankful to have the opportunity to serve each of you um, here at Mountain West. Uh, this church has been such a blessing to our family. Um, if you've been watching the past couple weeks, Pastor Michael has been in a series uh, studying Psalms 23. And if you weren't able to see those uh, uh, sermons, I highly recommend that you go back and, and you take a look. I, I believe they'll bless you, they'll encourage you, and I think you'll find them uh, highly valuable in, in today's climate. But today, uh, Pastor Michael has given me the freedom to share some of my own thoughts about, uh, about what I've been um, studying to help me uh, as I over the past few months. And, and I hope that you find today's message helpful also. So, so man, I hope, you're, I hope you're excited to hear a word today. It, it, it's Sunday. It's the first day of a brand new week. And I pray that you're feeling refreshed that you're feeling hopeful, that you um, that you look at the cup of your life, man, and, and you see it half half full, that you just have a confident expectation that, that more of God's goodness is going to pour out on your life. But um, but because I've, I've talked to some of you, I know that many of us today uh, woke up with, with troubled minds and, and worried hearts. Um, so today... I want us to talk about finding rest in the Lord. With all the stuff going on, it just wound up becoming really important to me to really examine that, like finding rest in the Lord. All right, and so I'll be the first to admit right now we have a lot of stuff going on today. There are a lot of thoughts and perspectives out there begging for our attention, and yes, We've got some serious work to do as a community to learn how to love one another and see one another as, as God sees us. But in this season, I, I really want us to be careful because no matter what side of the aisle our perspective is from, a lot of the stuff available, a lot of the videos, a lot of the, the jargon and the talk that's out there is really like wolf, sheep, are wolves in sheep clothing, amen? Are worldly agenda hidden in a little bit of truth? The, that, the, and those, the, that thought and those, those perspectives are leading us to dead end roads of anger and fear and anxiety and even self-righteousness. And so here's something that I, I want us to listen to. Galatians 5, through 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, uh, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And so if the stuff that we're watching right now, those videos that you're scrolling through and pushing play on, if they don't, if, if they don't produce that fruit in your heart and in your mind, maybe, maybe you need, we need to stop watching a little less. You know, we need to start watching it. Uh, maybe not at all. <laughs> because all a person needs now is a TV and a smartphone. And real quick, if they're not careful, they can find themselves getting pulled down one of those dead end roads. Amen. And so to me, I, and I hope this is something that you, that you find helpful as well. To me, I think something we should hold dear to our hearts and really serve as a foundation for our individual ministries as we engage this world, we need to learn and live out the discipline of finding rest in the Lord. Hebrews 4.11 says this, Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. You know, from this scripture, we see that uh, there's a connection between rest and unbelief. So in our lives, when we live in anxiety for too long, it can, it can impact our faith. When we live in hate and in strife for, 
for too long, it can begin to impact our faith. And we know that scripture tells us that it's impossible to please God without what? Without faith. And so it winds up being really important for us to find a way to settle our emotions, settle our heart and our mind in a place of rest and in, in, in peace. Here, here, here's another one, Romans 12 and two, it says, and be not conformed to this world. Don't be patterned after this world. Don't, don't do stuff like this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye, would, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I love this scripture for right now because here's what happens if uh, when we start listening to the world's thoughts and the world's pundits, we start thinking like the world. And when we start thinking like the world, we start talking like the world and maybe more appropriate now, appropriately now typing <laughs> and texting like the world and, and, and then ultimately behaving and looking like the world. And we wind up finding ourselves getting pulled away from the right thought and the right perspectives that produce uh, the, the fruit of the spirit to the world's perspective that leads to emptiness and dead ends. And so when we're listening to the world's thoughts, here's another key point. What will wind up happening, if we can put weight in the world's thoughts, you know what else? We can put weight in our own thoughts and our own perspectives and our own capabilities. And, and that's just as dangerous. Um, and, and, and it's dangerous because in certain moments in our own eyes, we can think we're real smart and above average thinkers, but in God's eyes, man, we're just simple fools, right? It's kind of like the same thing when in our own eyes, we can think some of our behavior is, is righteous, especially when we start comparing ourselves to others. And, but man, in God's eyes, it's, it's filthy rags. But on the flip side, it's kind of like how we can see ourselves as unrighteous, yeah? But through the lens of Jesus, God sees us as righteous, yeah? So what am I saying? Ultimately, the only thing that matters is what God thinks about a thing. We don't have to spend so much time trying to figure out, oh my God, what does my, my favorite talk talking head, think about this subject. Oh man, they really said that. Oh, they really told them, you know what, man, let's, let's put more weight. Oh God, what do you say about this? And the other piece I, I want to hit on in terms of Romans 12 and two is, you know, as we pursue transformation for our lives in our communities, as we respond to this call to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, we, we have to know that that thought shift and that mind renewal that's needed requires an atmosphere of rest within us. Uh, rest is a major part of our renewal. Again, rest is a major part of our renewal. As we see the principle of rest all throughout scripture and in God's creation, we see even in Leviticus where God gives or uh, provides instructions about allowing the soil to rest so that it can rejuvenate. And so it's, it's, it's true, and this is something that I think is important for us to, that will help us understand rest. When God does something, especially when he does something for the first time, he sets a precedent. God is very deliberate and intentional, and by understanding the precedents that God established, we can know him better and understanding his intention for his creation better. And so uh, here's, here's a thought. Here's something that I noticed in scripture recently. The very first thing God ever did regarding his relationship with man is he introduces rest. Yeah, he introduces rest. In Genesis chapter one, we, we get a full catalog of what, of, of what God did to, to establish the heavens and the earth. And on the sixth day, God created man. And on the seventh day, God rested. The Lord did all the work and man entered into the rest. On the sixth day, the Lord does give a word of instruction and intention 
to, to man. But before man does anything, they spend a day resting with God. Their first day is a day of rest with the Lord. It's a principal thing. Rest is a principal thing. And it's a precedent that we see carry through into our New Testament relationship with Jesus. We walk into the finished work of Jesus and enter his rest. So despite whatever is going on in the world, we have a territory that is bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus that is available for our hearts and for our minds. So if we're going to describe what our relationship with Jesus should look like, it would be that we love the Lord and we find rest in him. That's how we should relate, in love and in rest. Because in Jesus, we have the permission and the power to be at peace, to view all of life from a place of rest, from a place of assurance, from a place of confidence, to literally live life a life that is calm and untroubled. All right, so how should we, how should we think about rest? Um, here, here, here's a thought. Uh, rest is the tangible expression of God's presence. All right, rest is the tangible expression of God's presence. Look at Exodus. 33 and 14, it says, the Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. The presence of God shifts things. And I think it's a good idea to, to realize that, that, that we can invite God into our situation. We can invite Jesus into our hearts and in our, our troubled minds and, and rest. Rest will come. Rest will come. Amen. Here's another one. Rest is a weapon. Rest is something that, that, you know, we have to receive, okay? So it's hard to trust the Lord and be anxious. They, 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 don't, they don't go together. So there, there comes a point where we have to choose. We, we have to choose what we're going to think. We have to choose what we're going to see. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we do. We have the freedom to choose. And so we, so we need to displace the, the negative emotions and the dead end emotions that are in us. And so, and rest is a, a weapon that, that can come against those negative emotions that are trying to infiltrate our lives. Amen. And so in that sense, again, rest is a weapon. Worry, anxiety, and fear don't go away by themselves. They need to be kind of helped. And rest is militant against those negative emotions. And rest is, is critical in our warfare. Look at Deuteronomy 12 and 10, it says, but you will cross the Jordan and settle in the land. The Lord, your God is giving you as an inheritance and he will give you rest from all of your enemies around you so that you will live in safety. <laughs> Here's another thought. Rest is a doorway. Deuteronomy 12 and nine, it says, since you have not reached the resting place, the inheritance the Lord your God has given you. Uh, but, but again, in Deuteronomy 12 and, and, and 10, it says, but you will cross the Jordan and settle in the land your God is giving you as an inheritance. Amen. So rest is a part of our inheritance, but it's, it's, it's a doorway to our inheritance. We, we, it's hard to enter into the inheritance before we're rested, Right? We have to come to a place where we trust in the Lord and we trust in his promises and we've rested, rested our hearts on the, on, the, on the promises that he's given us. And, and it's not until that point that we're able to enter into uh, the promises. Look at Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and petition. 
um, it, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, will, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts, kind of like a door, will guard your hearts, your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. So here's what we do. We, we put rest at the entry point and the gate of our life and anything that wants to get in will have to come through rest and peace, amen. Here's another one, rest is an atmosphere shifter. Look at Mark 4, 35, uh, 35 through 41, or 25 through 41, it says, 35 through 41, Lord of mercy. <laughs> And it says this, the day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind. They took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat. And so it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in a stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to the disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? I love this because we see Jesus who could be described as, as the Sabbath day personified, the rest that we all need he comes into this moment and he speaks to the storm and he brings peace. And I, I tell you, a good thought to have right now, especially when we're thinking about rest, is we, we need to know that rest, the rest that, that, that is available to us in Jesus, it can shift atmospheres and homes where there's tension, where homes where there's strife, in friend and family relationships where there's, there's anger and strife, we have the ability to shift that atmosphere. Honestly, just by finding rest for our own hearts and our own minds. Rest, yes, is an atmosphere shifter. Look at Deuteronomy 28, 65 through 67. Among those nations, you will find no repose, no resting place for the sole of your feet. The Lord will go, will give you an anxious mind, eyes weary with longing and a despairing heart. You will live in a constant, in constant suspense, filled with dread, both night and day, never sure of your life. In the morning, you will say, if only it were evening. And in the evening, if only it were morning because of the terror that will fill your hearts in the in the excuse me and the sights that your eyes will see. Oh, that that that's describing a person that that has no rest, and it, it may be describing what what many of us are going through right now. And so, how can we develop more peace and rest in our lives? All right, so here are a couple of thoughts sort of as, as we wrap up. Cast your cares. We think that resting is 100% about doing nothing, and, and, and that can be true. As busy as we are as humans, we can tend to gloss over this rest as, as being lazy. However, the rest the Bible talks about is an action between us and God. It's a partnership that we develop with our creator, it's entering into his rest and casting our burdens on him. For example, when we are discouraged, we can get in prayer and we can say, tell the Lord that, that Lord, we trust him to move on our behalf. There's, there's no protocol, there's no specific way we have to do it. All we need to do is just, just be ourselves. Here's the next one, let go of your burdens. Our problems are not a surprise to God. When we try to make things happen and, and work in, uh, in the flesh to vindicate ourselves or to promote ourselves, we always end up in trouble. We can lean on God and find rest in him. We can enjoy life no matter what is going on because guess what? Worrying is useless and will cause more stress for our minds and in our bodies. 
So don't wear, we don't want to wear ourselves out trying to control the uncontrollable. The bottom line is that we are going to be, um, we'll end up being counterproductive when we uh, enter into this type of negative cycle. It's ultimately like running in circles. We're exerting a whole lot of energy, but we're going nowhere. Here's the next one, surrender. We have to surrender our will. Resting in the Lord is also giving up our, our, our ego and not having our way. Surrendering to God's will helps us rest. Um, you, our, our will, we, we know that we've reached this, this point where we trust in him to do the work when we realize that we don't have to defend ourselves anymore from gossip and, and slander or injustice. And it's a level of, of spiritual maturity that's not easily mastered, uh, but maturity doesn't, obviously it doesn't happen overnight. It's like a muscle that we need to keep using so it becomes stronger. Don't be upset if you find that you keep failing in an area in your life. I, there, here's a quote that I, that I like. It says, Father, if this problem, pain, sickness, or circumstances needed to fulfill your purpose and glory in my life and is an or in another's life, please don't take it away. All right, and here's the last um, uh, point. It says, remember that you are loved. God loves us unconditionally. No matter what, um, nothing can separate us from his love. His love does not fluctuate as it like it does with people. Uh, the Lord does not hang it over our heads when we mess up or sin. Uh, he gave us Jesus to atone for this. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And on our darkest days, when there's nothing to keep us going, God loves us. A quote I like is, is it says this, at our lowest point, we'll discover that God's love is, is deeper still. And it is the kind love, it's the kind of love no one can match. No husband, no friend, no, no child will love you the way the father can and does love you. So when we understand this, we can move ahead and love ourselves, our enemies, and love God in rest. All right. So those were a couple of thoughts that, that, that helped me, but I want to end this with um, talking about Peter. Peter's life really helped me um, think through this whole rest thing. Peter uh, was... Uh, an amazing, very important character in, in New Testament. And there's a point where uh, God gives him a promise, right? We see in Matthew 16, 13 through 20, it says, now when Jesus came into the district uh, of Phil Philipp Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do you say that the son of man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist Others say Elijah, others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father and who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on the, this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed on heaven. And then he strictly charged the disciple to tell no one that he was the Christ. And, and that's a beautiful, powerful moment. Man, th th there was a revelation that Peter had that the that the Jesus that he was following was actually the come Messiah and he professed that to the Messiah and, and was blessed. But just a few scriptures later, we see this. 
Matthew 16 and 21, 23, he says, for from, from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things and from the elders and the chief priests and scribes and, and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, far be it from you, Lord. This shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. You are not setting your mind on things of God, but on things of man. And why I love this, because Peter had just received a, a beautiful promise from God. But then we see Jesus speaking directly to Peter and saying, get thee behind me, Satan. And there's so much we could unpack right there, but I don't, what I, I think is good to say right now is like, Jesus was talking to Peter, but really he was speaking to this, a spirit, a wrong thought that had gotten on Peter. He, he, wasn't necess, he wasn't speaking to the flesh and blood that, that stood before his eyes. He was speaking to a spirit and I think that's important to know today that what we're wrestling against, all this strife and all this, this anger and hate that we have floating around, we're, we're really not wrestling against flesh and blood, but we're, we're wrestling against wrong thinking, a, a spirit that is trying to, to, to divide and, and, and conquer us and, and scatter us about. But, but also what we see is that the Lord gave him a word and really all Peter kept wanting to do and we can see it over and over again, he kept doing too much and, and saying too much. He couldn't find a place of rest. The Lord gave him a word and he just kept talking too much and doing too much. Later you see uh, that, that, that Peter cuts a, a soldier's ear off and, and, and then later he, he says, Lord, I'll never, I'll never forsake you. I, I'll never leave you behind. And, and, then, and then ultimately he denies Christ three times. And what's powerful about that is even in this moment, there's a, what I love is there's this scripture where, where um, after Jesus has suffered on the cross and he's raised and he comes back to his disciples and Jesus finds the disciples and guess what Peter's doing? He's working. <laughs> he's working. And he had stripped his clothes off so he could work and they're fishing and, and Jesus recognizes, or excuse me, Peter recognizes Jesus and immediately he jumps in and runs, stops his work and runs to Jesus. And he had prepared a, a feast for his disciples. I mean, all I'm trying to say is man, Jesus has done it all. And when we know we're loved, we, we, we can run to him and rest in him. Amen. So I'm going to, I'm going to pray for us and we're going to hear some more worship from our team and, um, today's communion Sunday. So during that worship moment, maybe just go ahead and grab your elements so we can, so we can partake in, in our communion together. Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. Father, we just say hallelujah and thank uh, for, for the rest that we have in you. Lord, we know that there, there's a lot happening. And God, I just ask that you continue to build us up in the rest that we have available in you. Lord, that you would just be a shield all around our homes and our minds. And as we go to and fro, Lord, that, that we would just experience more of the rest, enter the promised rest that you so freely give. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. <laughs>